Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Um, so I've been working out some lighting issues lately, so I hope it's getting better and better for you guys. Thank you for my followers for keep on watching. I really love you guys and I'm so glad that you're part of my YouTube family. Um, so today I'm going to be doing a tutorial on this same Patty's Day makeup look. I did a hair look the other day for you guys and of course you can match them together. Um, but since a lot of people are going to be out and about, I tried to make it a little bit fun, a little bit, you know, a little pop of green in there. But still, you know, you can wear it to work before. Um, so that's what I would recommend for this look. Um, yeah, so let's get into the tutorial. Uh, don't forget to subscribe to my channel. Hold on. I don't know what side it is, but please subscribe if you like it so I can do some more looks for you guys and I look forward to seeing you again soon. Bye! So as always, I start with my Too Faced Poreless Primer and I just put all over my face. And I actually showed you guys some swatches here before I did my makeup, so this is what the swatch looks like. Next, I'm going in with my Hourglass Golden Tan Foundation, and you really don't need a lot of this, so I put a very little bit on, it really is full coverage, and you're going to see, I'm going to use my toothbrush brushes, these are from Neverland Beauty and Health, I got them off of Amazon, they're really good, I like the way they spread around the product, and they kind of stipple it into your skin. Now I do like to be extra so just an FYI I did put two layers of the golden tan hourglass foundation on my skin. And next I am taking the Anastasia stick foundation in mink to do my contour and I just did it like normal and I'm just going in with a smaller brush from the Neverland Beauty and Health the same set to blend the contour in to the foundation and then I used an even smaller one to snatch my nose For highlight, I'm going in with Hourglass's Warm Ivory, and I do want to reiterate with these foundation sticks, guys, they're so full coverage, you really do not need a lot, especially when you're layering one on top of the other, um, so just keep that in mind if you guys are using full coverage like this one. And again, with the same brush set, because I wanted to show you guys the versatility and the amount of brushes that this set came with is amazing. Um, if you don't, I'll put all the product details below as usual, um, so you can check it out. Next, I do my eyebrows off camera. They take really long. And then I'm going to bake with my one and only Ben Nye Luxury Powder in Banana and really pack that on underneath the eyes and I'm gonna cut the contour at my cheek contour as well. I have kind of an oval face so I really gotta carve my cheeks out to make it look like I got them wide cheekbones. Okay now for the more complex part, the eyes. We're gonna start with soft ochre. Now I tried using the same brush in that Neverland brush set and to be honest I didn't love the way it was spreading the product around. So you're gonna see I just went in with my finger to fix it up and then I kind of used that brush at the end just to kind of go under the brow line. So 
So the starting color I'm using is from the Modern Renaissance palette. Oops. I'm going in with Primavera. I'm going to put that in the inner corner of my lid and I'm still going to spread it outwards. I like doing this because it gives the colors a really nice gradient when you start to blend it. And I am using a MAC 224 for this. Next I'm going in with my MAC 217 into my Tardist Pro palette. Excuse me, it's so dirty. I know I have to clean the outside. I'm going in, my transition color is going to be Whimsy. Um, so when I put this on guys, I like to look at the mirror with my eyes open so you can see where the transition color is going to show when you open your eyes. And then I like to blend going downwards from there and literally just across the entire eye. I really hope that that makes sense for you guys. Next step, I'm dipping back into the Tardis Pro and I'm going in with the color Edgy. It's that brownish color. And I'm taking one of these Morphe brushes and I'm just packing on in kind of like a V shape. That's how you get the start of the cat eye. So I pack on the color and then I kind of blend it going towards the outside of my eye. And the trick here is really just to make sure you're keeping it in that V pattern but also blending it into the other colors you have on your eye. Also these Morphe brushes are so wicked. You don't need a lot of pressure at all and it will just magically blend. You really don't have to work it in. It just does all the work for you with these brushes. And I'm just going to fast forward this part, but I do want to keep it in so that you guys can see the process and the amount of blending that it takes to achieve this look. So once you're finished both eyes, this is how it should look with the gradient of the really light color going to the really dark color on the outside kind of in that V pattern with the transition color all in a gradient and then we're going back into Tardis Pro and then we're going to use the blackest color there I forget what it's called but I'll link it in the description with a really tiny brush and I'm just gonna go in the very corners and amplify that V shape. That's what really brings out the cat eye. I know a lot of people just do it with straight black or straight brown, but when you go in with the black and then you do the gradation to the dark brown, that's what gives it the real big cat eye um, on the top of the lid. So just amplify that V and again, just a little bit in the corner and blend, blend, blend. I like to wing out my cat eye a little bit. So feel free to do the same. A little trick I like to use to clean up the lines is go back in just with the baking sponge and just put a little bit underneath to carve out that line a little bit more and really accentuate um, the cat eye that you got going on on the top. So I'm going back in with the same brush. I don't have extra product on it, but I just really want to make sure that that really the darkest color is really carved out really nicely, but also like blended perfectly into the top part and the transition part of my eye. So I'm just going in and this part's just all about cleaning it up and getting those really nice sharp lines. Next, I'm going in with MAC eyeshadow in Swimming, and I'm just using an, an eyeliner brush. This is a, just happens to be a Morphe brush, and I'm just going underneath, just under the lash line, so I would say lower lash line, 
and I did two full layers of this because I really wanted that green to pop and of course you guys can use different colors depending on what you're wearing or if you want to just do kind of like a regular cat eye then I would suggest that black color and then kind of smoke out the bottom next I'm going in with that smoky out brush smoky out brush a brush to smoke out the bottom it's a Mac 219 and I'm going in with the same color I used in the transition zone so that whimsy color from the TARDIS Pro palette just to give the eyes a bit more of a smokiness now I did this three times filming this guys and this is the first time I messed up and I put some on my face but I think God luckily was on the baking part and I was able to fix it very quickly so you can kind of see here how there's a little bit more dimension and depth when you kind of go in with a different color and you don't just have the green by itself And then I'm just going in and I'm really cleaning up the green color and I'm just making the lines a little bit sharper. I left this part in guys because this is how what it takes to really achieve the look. Like it's not one, two, three and you're done. Like there's a lot of cleanup involved in this look, at least for me. Next I'm going in, this is the first time I've been used, I use this. It's the Fake Awake by Tarte because I really wanted to open up the eye and have just kind of like a fresh look you'll notice though because i had so much green and i like put the green a little bit in the waterline it got there then it just kind of brightened up the the green it made it kind of like a creamy green which i didn't really mind um so just note that if you don't like that then just really try to stick to the lower lash line with the green so that the color uh, the neutral color can really show um, to make your eyes pop. And then this is do, just doing a wing liner using, uh, y'all know my favorite, the TARDIS Double Take Eyeliner because it's so precise. And we're just going to um, follow the same lines that we created to make that wing liner perfect. Next, I, I'm going to butcher the name of this guy, so sorry in advance. It's the Shu Umara, Umara eyelash curler. And then I do the Annabelle Outlash Mascara before I put the lashes on my eye. Now, as I was putting this mascara on, my fiasco number two happens and I just like froze here it comes Luckily, I got my bearings and I know how to fix this. So you just continue um, doing what you're doing and you let it dry. And then, uh, really easy fix, you're just gonna take a spoolie and wipe it all away. So just like a little, little bit at a time. And then you're done. Whew, big save. And then we're just going to go with a big fluffy brush and get all that baking off. And I tried Huda Beauty lashes for the first time. These are in Sasha and I was like, come on. Like they're, they were so pretty when I put them on. I really, really love the lashes. If you follow me on Insta, I did kind of like a mini first impression. They are so amazing. They had a thicker band. These are the Sasha 11s. Uh, but they did sit really close to my lash line without feeling like something's like sticking you in your eye and like they're too heavy. They're actually really light and they were really easy to mold. They're just like perfect. Um, mascara on the bottom and then I'm taking 
MAC Sheer Tone Blush in Peaches, just to rosy up the cheeks a little bit. I like this because it kind of blends with that transition color, which is a more peachy tone. And then for the highlight, I'm taking Becca Shimmering Skin Perfector Pressed in Opal. Woo! Love that highlighter. I love this highlighter. It's so milled and when you really blend it in, you really like, you can see that your face is highlighted, but it's not like too, too um, speckled with sparkles, if that makes any sense. I don't really like that speckled look. Next, for the lips, I'm going to be using Marc Jacobs shade in Kiss Kiss Bang Bang. And before you guys even think it, no, I did not spend my own money on Marc Jacobs. What are you thinking? I am not a crazy person. I did get this in the Sephora um, birthday sample thing. And then I just lined my lips with it and then I'm going in with MAC Kinda Sexy to give it some dimension. And once that's all kind of blended together, that is it guys. Finished with a set powder or a spray if you're going anywhere. And again, this look isn't just for St. Patty's Day, guys. It's like super spring. You can line it with whatever color you want. Brown eyes, um, I usually do like a purple would look really good too. Uh, anyways, please subscribe. Follow me on Insta and Snap to see what I'm up to daily. I love you guys. Thank you for watching. I'll see you next time. I'm in St. Patty's Day spirit. Woo.